Okay, so good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this webinar with FX Street, our wonderful hosts. In today's webinar, we're going to talk about price action trend trading. Okay, um, now, of course, you can trade price action against a trend as well. That's absolutely fine. Um, today, we're going to focus on a simple way that you can uh, take make the most out of the trends that occur in the markets. Now, before we go any further, we have to do our usual disclaimer, which is to say the content of this webinar is not investment advice and should be used purely for educational purposes only. All participants are advised to seek their own counsel prior to investing or entering into any trade. Spread betting and any other type of financial trading carries a high level of risk to your capital with the possibility of losing considerably more than your initial investment. The content of this webinar may not be suitable for all investors and as an individual, um, you, sh you should ensure that, that you're fully aware of the risks involved. And if necessarily, uh, necessarily, necessary, the advice of an independent financial advisor. So a little bit about myself. My name's Alex Ong. I've been trading with my brother for almost a decade now. Um, we have no special bank training. Why is it important? Why have I put that there? Um, the reason that I put that there is really to give hope to all of you guys and girls watching this here. You know, a lot of the time people say, can you make money in the markets? Is it just something that the professionals can do? All of that kind of good stuff. But, um, you know, you can come from any background and you can make money in the markets. Um, and that's what we teach people to do and hopefully what we'll be teaching you to do today. We consult for a private investor fund. Um, we've run Traders Corner for the past five years, and we've taught over 5,000 people over the course of five years our strategies and um, techniques. And if you want to follow me, you can follow me on Twitter at Alex Ong UK. All right. So all of that boring stuff out of the way. Let's talk about um, today's webinar. So the technique that I'm going to show you, the strategy I'm going to show you is a swing trading strategy. All right. You're going to be trading in the in the direction of the major trends and you're entering on the pullbacks. All right. But we're only going to be taking the best setups. And most importantly, this can be applied to any time frame. So if you are a person that day trades and likes to look at the five minute chart, what I'm going to show you applies to that. If you're somebody that prefers to look at the, you know, the hourly charts or the daily charts, you can apply this to that as well. Um, if any of you watch my Forex Focus videos that go out on FX Street every week, um, I don't know if you do, but say yes or no if you do. Um, if you watch my Forex Focus videos, a lot of my analysis, all of the ideas that I come up with come from this approach to trading. Okay, So if you use this approach in conjunction with the videos, the Forex Focus videos we put out on FX Street every week, um, you're going to put yourself in a great position to be able to profit from the markets. So the first thing that we have to do when we're looking to trade in the direction of the trend is that we need to contextualize price. You see, a trading system is important, but unless you know where you are trading in the market, you can still fail miserably. Harsh, but true. A trend on one time frame might be consolidation on another and a pullback on another. So the location to where we're going to take the trades is extremely important. All right. In fact, I would go as far as to say it's, it's the key to successful trading. If you take a trade arbitrarily in the middle of the charts, um, you're going to find that you're going to have a um, strike rate at best. If, however, you take trades from key locations where you know the market is going to react, you're going to take your trades in the direction of the major trend, you're going to see that your strike rate comes out way above, you know, 50, 60 percent. All right. And that's what we're going to show you in this webinar right here. Is everybody with me so far? And you all hear me. Well, I just sat here talking to myself. Ah, FX Trad, how are you? Welcome. <laughs> you are all, all alive. All right. So looking at this chart here, and for those of you that have seen a couple of my webinars, you've probably seen this before, but it's just the perfect way to demonstrate what I'm talking about. If we look at this chart here on a one hour chart, we would say that we're in a downtrend. The market's making lower lows and lower highs. 
if we were forced to take a trade here, if the market stuck a gun to our head and said, you need to take a trade, um, your life depends on it, we would kind of say, really, we should be looking to sell here. The major, the trend is with us um, on the hourly anyway. So if, we, if we're just looking at this chart, if we have to take a trade, we would go short. However, looking at the four-hour chart, you'd actually have to say to yourself, well, actually, um, if I had to take a trade here, I'm sort of up towards the highs. Um, therefore, I'm going to take a, well, you'd still take a short from here. Um, but if you had to, if you were forced to take any particular trade, you wouldn't have the, the best idea. Going back to the one hour chart, it's clear you want to be going short here. You would take a short from this level here. But at the same time, you could be looking at a breakout um, because the market's coming up to these highs, could be breaking out of these highs if we looked at this chart here, you'd see that we've sort of got higher high, higher, blah, 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 higher highs and higher lows printing for us here. So therefore, oops, sorry. That's the problem with a Mac. Apologies for that. It rings through to the Mac as well as my phone. Um, but anyway, the point is, looking at this particular chart here, you wouldn't have the best idea in the world. Looking at this chart here, the daily chart, you would have to say that, you know, the trend is up. You're looking to buy the market, correct? So the point is, is that if you're trading a one hour chart, you need to be paying attention to the higher time frames. If you're trading a five minute chart, you want to be looking at the 15 minute and the one hour time frames. You want to know where the, the bigger trend is going. Because once you understand where the bigger trend is going, it helps you make your decision as to where you want to trade. It also has the added benefit of letting you know where the major levels are. So you won't be trading into big levels. That where I just showed you on the four hour here and the one hour here, that is actually this location here on the daily chart. OK, see this price action here on the daily. That is what it is. And if we look to the left, we can see that we're playing with a previous level of structure. So previous um Structure high has been broken. Previous resistance is now acting as support. So you don't want to be trading into that level. You look at the daily chart, it's clear. The market has got momentum to the upside. You want to be a buyer. You do not want to be a seller. All right? So what do we do? Well, first of all, we have to identify the opportunity. We're looking for a trending market with harmonic swings. All right? What do I mean by that? Well, we're not looking for a market where the where we can't really identify the higher highs and the higher lows. So if I go back to the four hour chart here, this this isn't a trending market. There are not harmonic swings here. It's very difficult to tell where the market's going to go next. All right. This, however, looking at this chart, you can see that there's momentum to the upside. So you would be looking to to buy if you're at the hard right edge of the chart over here. So we're looking for a trending market with harmonic swings. And that also means that you want sort of, um, what's the word for it? You want pullbacks that are about 50 to 60% of the previous momentum move. All right? You don't want to be getting into, into pullbacks which have just retraced 100% of the previous move. All right? We then look for support or resistance level that could potentially provide an entry point. Now, these can be horizontal support and resistance. They could be Fibonacci levels, and they can be trend lines. All right? But we want a level that is big enough that we think the rest of the markets are going to be looking at that level as well. The rest of the market is going to be looking to trade from that level. Entries. There are four ways that you can enter. You can enter on a one, two, three reversal, and we'll come to that in the moment. You can enter on a candlestick pattern. All right, so you can enter on, you know, a doji, shooting star, hammer bottom, all of that kind of stuff. You can enter on a candlestick pattern. You can enter on a counter trend line break, and you can enter on a combination of any of the above. If you watch the Forex Focus videos, you'll see that I use a combination of these depending on the market condition, depending on the best entry that I can get. And the best entry is the one that I perceive to be the lowest risk, highest reward. Um, then I'll take it and I'll take it based on any 
of these entry techniques here. So we'll start off by talking about a one, two, three reversal. What is a one, two, three reversal? <laughs> that is exactly what I'm going to cover here. You just answered the next question, which I was going to say, who here knows what a one, two, three reversal is? Or an ABC reversal. Well, basically, for a one, two, three reversal, we generally, gener generally, generally trade from two charts. We have a longer term chart for identifying the trend and the possible entry points. Once we have the trend, so which where's the market going, and we have our entry point being a support or resistance level, then what we do is we drill down to a lower time frame, a shorter time frame. So, for example, if we were trading a daily chart, we may drill down to the four hour time frame or maybe even the one minute time frame to look for our entry point. We've taken the direction from the daily charts. We've looked at our entry points from the from the um, daily charts, so the support and resistance levels. But we're going down to the four hour hour or the one hour time frame to define where we're actually going to get into the market. What is the entry price? OK, once we. Once we've found all of those levels, we then use our one, two, three reversal pattern to get into the markets. Now, this is a well-known pattern by most professional market participants. And the reason that's important is that we want to be on the side of the major market participants. We don't want to be buying off of them when they're selling, and we don't want to be selling to them when they're buying. We want to be taking the same trades as they are because they're making the money, right? And this will help us do that. Now, this helps us to get in once a move has been confirmed. It allows us to see a reaction to the level. So we're not just going to take a trade because the price is approaching that level. We're taking a trade because we've seen a reaction to a level that we have already identified. Do you follow so far? So here is an example of a daily trend. All right, this is the dollar franc, and as you can see, we've got a trend line pointing to the downside. The market is making lower highs and lower lows all the way down. We have a previous level of support here, which becomes resistance. What happens? The market comes up to that level, previous level of support, treats it as a resistance, and then sells off. Okay. It comes, breaks through a previous level of support here. So it breaks through that level. Okay. And then it pulls back to that level. Then what happens? It sells off again. It breaks through that level and it comes back to it. And what happens? It sells off again. You cannot make this stuff up. It's absolutely perfect. So once we can identify which way the market's going, if we can wait for the market to pull back to a predefined level of support or resistance, whether that be identified like this or identified via a trend line or Fibonacci, whatever it is that you're looking for. If you can identify those levels and you can use a, a good entry technique, which is what we're showing you here on this webinar, you will come out ahead of the game. You will make money on your trades. Now, unfortunately, this isn't the sexiest way to trade, right? You know, you, you kind of have visions of being in and out of the market many, many different times. You don't really see yourself waiting for trades to come to you. But the, the simple fact of the matter is they are the best trades. If you can wait for the market to come to you, all right, you can remain disciplined. You can be patient. You're going to come out ahead, ahead of the game. You're going to start to take trades. You're going to start to make money. Once you make money, you will then have confidence in the system. And then you can build on increasing your size. Okay. Is everybody with me so far? So what we've done is we've identified the daily trend. We've identified a level that we want to trade from. All right. And the actual trade that we're looking at is this one here. So the market has broken through this previous level of support here and is coming back to and is treating it as resistance. Ignore the trend line because you wouldn't have known the trend line was there at that particular moment of time. You could use the trend line down for this trade here, but this one that we're looking at in particular we would just use the previous level of support is now acting as resistance. So what happens when the market comes up to this level? We get a one, two, three reversal. What is that? Well, are we all 
okay with the definition that a trend from a technical perspective is a series of higher highs and higher lows in an uptrend and a series of lower highs and lower lows in a downtrend. Is everybody happy with that definition of a trend? <laughs> yes? Good. So what do we have here? Let's look at this price action. We were looking at the daily charts. We're now on the four hour chart. The market is making a series of higher highs and higher lows. So even though the daily chart is pointing down on the four hour chart, we've got a mini uptrend on our hands. Wonderful. So what do we look for? We wait for the market to get back to our predefined level of support, which is now going to act as resistance. We wait for the market to get there. Then we wait, wait for it to technically change the trend. That's what the one, two, three reversal is. So the market comes up to the high, our previous level of support becoming resistance. That's point one. It then comes down and makes a low. That's point two. It then comes up, and this is important, and makes a high that is not as high as point one. It's not as high as the previous high. That's a clue. That's our first clue that the market might actually be about to change its direction. All right, on the four hour perspective. So we're looking at the pullback here. We're waiting for this pullback to be over. And this is a great indication. So the market comes up and makes a high, makes a low, makes a lower high there, and then eventually breaks through point two. And that's where we enter. We place our stop above point one over there. All right. And we enter into the trend. And more often than not, we can get one and a half to one to two to one before the market is even needed to break through the immediate lows. Does that make sense to everybody? Does anybody have any questions on the one, two, three reversal? Anyone? Everybody's comfortable with that particular entry technique. This is a very, very powerful entry technique, by the way. So learn it well. Come back. Watch the recording that's put up. FX Street will put the recording up there. Watch that recording. I promise you. You're not going to be disappointed. I'm entering at line two. Yes, indeed. I'm entering once the market breaks through line two. Okay, cool. So we'll move on. So that's the one, two, three reversal. The other way that you can enter into a trade based on price action is looking at candlestick reversal patterns. Candlestick reversal patterns are very, very powerful. It has the added benefit of you only really need to look at one time frame, all right? although you should pay attention to levels on the higher time frames. But as far as entry is concerned, whereas you're looking at the daily and then the four hour for entry on the one, two, three reversals with the candlestick, you can look at the daily time frame for your candlestick reversal pattern as well. Now, the reason we love candlestick reversal patterns, they're well known by market participants. It also helps us to get in once the move has been confirmed and it allows us to see a reaction to the level. The thing with candlestick reversal patterns is not just understanding what a particular pattern is called, okay, but it's more about understanding the dynamic for that particular candle. So understanding what the candle is telling you. Who here knows anything about candlestick reversal patterns. A few. Okay, so if we look at this trade here, all right, what we've got is the market is sort of consolidating here, all right. The previous trend was down. The market's broken through a level in this structure here we had a little bit of consolidation here the market's broken through that structure and it's pulled back to that structure now we prefer not to just trade because the market's at a level we prefer to see some sort of a a signal to get in all right and this signal that we're looking at here is this particular candle here the shooting star 
All right. Now, what's interesting about this candle? Well, it tells us a story. It tells us that at one point in time, the market was so bullish because the market opened at the bottom of this candle and it traded all the way up here. At one point in time, that candle that we're pointing at, that I have my cursor above at the moment, all right, that was a very, very bullish candle. It looked like the market was going to break out to the upside. Okay? However, it didn't do that. It closed right down there by the lows. So that's a very, very bearish sign. The market is telling us it doesn't like being above this level. So forget what the candlestick is, the candlestick's called. Think about what it's telling you. The market is telling us, I tried to get above there. I tried, but I failed. Why? Why would I fail? Because there were way too many people trying to sell up there. It seems like the majority of the other market participants wanted to sell at this level and not buy the breakout from that level. There's our clue. We can then get in when the market breaks through the low of this candle, placing your stop above the high. And as you can see, before the market's even made this move here, just to get down to these lows there, you're already making yourself you know, a one and a half to one. Uh, as A. Joe says, signifies a failure to continue. Exactly. So a lot of the time I see people getting way too caught up in, oh, what is this one called? And what is that one called? Don't worry about that. Just look at the candle and think about it logically. What is it telling you? What has happened in that particular period in time? In that four hour period of time, the market tried to get above that. It got rejected. If it got rejected from that level, we're more than likely going to see the market move lower as opposed to high, because it's already attempted to move higher, hasn't it? Let's look at another one. This is a hammer bottom. So the market breaks out. This is the dollar yen. It breaks out from this, from this structure level here. It pulls back to that level. The market at one point in time was extremely bearish. This was a huge, huge red candle here. It looked like the market was going to retrace at least some of this significant move here. However, the market then closes up towards the highs within a pip or two of its highs. Do you think that's a bearish sign or do you think that's a bullish sign? It's a bullish sign, right? Because the bears had a go. They, they made an attempt to sell through this level. And their attempt was rejected. We get a clue on this candle over here as well. Rejected. But the ones we're interested in are the ones at key levels. We're not just going to trade, you know, candlestick reversal patterns willy-nilly anywhere on the chart. We want to trade them at areas where we believe the price will turn around. See, that's why we ignore the candlestick, the doji over here, or the shooting star up there. Or the spinning top there. We want to be trading them at levels where we expect the market to turn around. So what about this one here? Bearish engulfing. We look to the left. It's the previous level of resistance. You look further to the left, you see it's previous level of support as well. So again, we're trading from a location that makes sense to us. All right, the market's pulled up to this level. It got rejected from that level once in the past. We actually enter on this candle here. Why? Why not this candle there? This first candle is a little bit indecisive. So yes, it was very bullish, but it didn't really quite close bearish. It just closed in the middle. This candle, however, made an attempt at those highs, and it completely engulfed the previous candle there. So we've got a lot of indecision at this level already. The first, the only thing I need... To convince me to get into a trade is a clue that the, the, the dynamic, the market, the major market force is going to move to the downside. That's where the next momentum move is going to be. And that's what we get here. The, the momentum move is an engulfing candle, engulfing this previous indecision candle there. Does that make sense? And you also have the opposite. 
So whereas with the bearish engulfing candle, you're looking to go short. With the bullish, we're looking to go long. And notice that I'm doing this without any, indi without any indicators on the charts. Even though I like to use indicators for some of my trading, you by no means need to use them. All we're doing here is we're building up a picture. We're looking at the, what the market is telling us. It's as simple as that, I promise you. You listen to, you read the story of the markets. Here, what are we looking at? The market's moving up. Higher highs, higher lows, lovely. It then pulls back to a previous level of support. And it provided a little bit of resistance there, but not quite. Previous level of support. Comes back to that level, and we get a bullish engulfing candle. So the market's been moving down, down, down. Suddenly we get a big body candle. It attempted, it attempted to go lower, but it didn't just close up towards where it opened. It went further than that, and it closed way above. So that to us is an indication the market wants to go higher. We place our stop below the lows. Even before you get to the highs there, you get more than a one-to-one -one risk reward trade. That is So is everybody happy with candlestick reversal patterns? Remember, don't worry about the names. Just think about what the candle is telling you at the location you have decided to take a trade from. The final technique in isolation is the counter trend line break. I like this quite a lot. Now, again, you only need to trade the one time frame, although you should pay attention to levels on the higher time frames. Um, you can also use a one, two, three reversal pattern in conjunction with this, um, with a counter trend line break. So you can get a one, two, three reversal and a counter trend line break, which is what you'll see there. I use quite a lot in the Forex, vi Forex Focus videos. It allows us to get in a little earlier than some of the other methods. All right. And it helps you to get in once a move has been confirmed. And also see a reaction to the level. So notice we're not trading any of the levels blindly. So what is a counter trend line break? Well, very simply, you're looking for a trend. When a trend is in place, you draw a trend line, a counter trend line, so the opposite way to the trend, containing the price action for that particular movement. Once you contain the price action, you're then waiting for the market to break out above that level and once it does that that um that is your confirmation to enter so i've just seen a question come in here how can i get confirmation by candlesticks um the candlestick pattern is the confirmation unless you are asking a different question sometimes trend line fake break and we are, we are, we are, and we're at a loss. Yes, indeed. Sometimes you will be at a loss, Raja. But that's trading. I can't teach you to never take a loss. Unfortunately, that's not within my power. I wish it was. And if it was in my power, I'd teach all of you to do that. But I can't teach you not to take a loss. What I can teach you to do is to be able to take profitable trades more often than not. I can teach you to not be discouraged when you take a loss. All right? I can teach you to take high probability trades that in the long run will make you money. Okay? So the counter trend line break is, is a relatively simple one. All right? We're looking for the market to make... Um, to trend in a direction, then we look for the pullback, we contain the pullback, and then we enter on the counter trend line break. And if you want to add in a one, two, three reversal from a lower time frame, you can do that as well. Regarding your stop loss, stop losses generally need to be placed behind the most logical levels. All right? So for a one, two, three reversal, you place it behind point one or three. For a, counter for a candlestick pattern, you place it behind the candle extreme, the high or the low of the candle. And for counter trend lines, you place it behind the most recent swing point. Take profits are a little bit more discretionary, but generally you're looking for pos possible areas of trouble to exit part or all of your positions. 
The following are basic principles that you should that should be followed initially. You definitely want to enter exit, sorry, part of your position before the previous swing extreme. That way, the market doesn't need to do anything special for you to make money on your trade. And that's the great thing there. And it's, so, as I said, it's ideal if the market doesn't need to break any of the new highs or lows, for that fact, for you to be able to make money. And also, you want to have a good risk reward. You know, if you can't get into a trade and justify, you know, at least a one to one risk reward, then perhaps wait for better opportunities because there are opportunities that will give you two, three to one risk reward. You know? Are there any questions on this? day trading. No, once you get good at this, you can have a pretty high win rate whether you trade a lower or a higher time frame. It really is dependent on the personality, on your personality. Are there any other questions? What I'd like to do is we'll go through a couple of the live charts. All right, so I'll show you a few trades I'm looking at the moment um, and why I'm looking at them. Okay, because that might give you a good indication of how you can use this trade and what I've shown you here in action. All right. So one of the ones I'm looking at is the Aussie dollar. Now, if you watch the Forex Focus videos, you'll notice that we were actually long, uh, sorry, we were short the Aussie dollar. We just got taken out of that the day before yesterday, which is a little bit annoying, but we're still confident of this trade. It's something that we're still going to look to take. And indeed, I might enter this later on today if the market continues like this. If the market closes like this later on this evening, I will then take this trade. Why? Well, first of all, I do have a counter trend line in there. It's not perfect, but it is there. But what I'm more interested in is the candlestick reversal. So you've got a massive momentum candle through the highs here. Now, remember, we're thinking about what the market is telling us. What is it? What's the story that the market is telling us? Well, we've got a massive momentum through, move through this high. If that momentum move was going to continue, if this was real, the market wouldn't be closing back below this level. It would be all the way, 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 way up here. Now, that tells me something. That tells me that that was an initial reaction to a piece of data or a piece of news. But it isn't a fundamental... Um, game changer, all right? The fact that this market mass made that massive momentum move, it then has the spinning top over here, and then the market is going to close down below this level. To me, that's a hugely bearish sign, and if the market closes like that, I'm going to be looking to take that trade. Yeah, it's a sell trade. So if we look at that there, making lower lows and lower highs, is it inconceivable that the market could go lower from this area here? Absolutely not. Am I willing to risk, what is that, 7, 0 spot 7900, 0 spot 80873. So let's call that 200 points, just to give the market a little bit of room to breathe, which is what I like to do. Is it worth, all right, so I need to make 200 pips for one-to-one. -one. 200 pips is here. Look at that. That's 200 pips. 
if I get down towards the lows, I'm making more than one and a half to one. So looking at this big trend here, do I say that it's worth the risk? Yes, I may be taken out of this trade. I've got every possibility of being taken out of this trade. But has the market shown me enough to justify me taking this trade? If I take this trade 10 times, will it pay me at least five times out of 10? I think so. So if it will pay me five times out of 10, okay, and I can get a positive risk reward, should I take the trade? Yes, I think so. So that's one of the trades that's on the card at the moment. But what about the recent trend up? Well, that's not a trend up pan on fire. That's not a trend up. That's merely a pullback. The trend, the lower lows and lower highs, the major trend is this here. What we're looking at is simply a bit of profit taking. Um, it's just the market's reactions, price acceptance. The market closes back below this level. But it's even talking it through with you guys, I'm more convinced than ever I'm going to be taking this trade at the end of the day, 100%. Unless, of course, it retraces back above this level. But as long as it closes below that level, I'm in short there. Could be a similar thing working, similar dynamic with the euro dollar. The euro dollar has broken out above this level. Now, it can do one of two things. It can either start to make a move to the upside, and we may get a move up towards 116, maybe even up towards 122. Who knows? I don't think it'll go that far, but you never know. However, if the market doesn't get all the way up to that level, if the market displays a similar dynamic, so the Aussie dollar that I just showed you and closes back beneath this level, I'm taking this short again. I'm going short again. Why? Because the market is telling me a story. Look at how far that market has gone. Should I be discouraged by this little bit, bit of a pullback? No. Why not? Because the market's moved from 138, 140 down to 104. 3,600 pips in less than six, well, just over six months. So do I expect a pullback? Absolutely. Do I think that the market is weighted to the downside? Yes, of course I do. Can it move to the upside? Yes, of course it can. We're not going to be right on every trade. We can just take educated decisions. All right? I'm not selling the market just because it's at this level. No, no. I need to wait for it to prove to me that it wants to be at that level. It wants to be lower than that level. Similar to what the Australian dollar is showing us at the moment. We'll go back to that chart. The Australian dollar right now has had a pullback, but it's massively bearish. Does this mean if I get into this trade, I'm going to make money? No. But I think that I will, as long as I take this trade again and again and again, the same sort of setup, I will make money in the long run. Okay. Are there any questions? Your short oops, is there more? Your short on the pound dollar. Okay, let's go take a look. See what this has to say for itself. You're short on the one hour on the pound dollar. I do like this trade. I do like it a lot. Will I get short right now? Perhaps. Perhaps I might wait for a little bit of extra confirmation. Not to say that you've done anything wrong. I like it a lot. I think the dynamic of this trade is absolutely perfect. Um, you have a lot of movement to the upside there. I would potentially wait for a break of one spot five three nine one. If it can break that level there, I would consider taking that short as well. I'd probably wait for the four hour to give me a one two three reversal though, because the one hour is quite a a big trend to the upside. 
Um, but certainly, this is something that is very, very interesting. Danny, I live in the UK, so I'm on British summertime. You're off the double top of you. Very nice. I like it. So you're in some profit right now. I like the trade a lot. We have five minutes left. Okay. Are there any advanced trend line technique? Uh, what do you mean by advanced trend line technique? Okay, so we need to start. I think that was uh, encouragement from FX Street for us to start um, <laughs> taking a few more questions and wrapping up the session. We don't want to go over there. Well, I again, I don't know what you mean by main, minor, and major trend line. A trend line to me is is a trend line. I don't really have major or minor trend lines. Really sorry if I'm being a bit dense here. Looking at the euro dollar, final touch for the euro dollar. I do very much like that pound that pound trade. I might wait for it to get a bit higher and then sell again. Go back to that pound trade. I'm actually going to, thank you, let me put it on my watch list. I think the way I'd look to play this trade, though, <laughs> is I might dip a toe in on a one, two, three reversal. But if we can get up to this level here at 55.51, oops. If we can get up to this level here and have a failed breakout, I'd look to take that and sell it at least down to sort of like the 52.30. And if we can get down below there, down to 49.09. So I think we could get a pretty decent risk reward trade on our hands there if we managed to take that trade. Okay, so are there any other questions? We've got two minutes left. And I think there's a premium webinar starting after this, so we can't really hang around. Has everybody enjoyed this session? Have you found it useful? It is a very, very good trading strategy, I promise you of that. Okay, well, all I can say is you missed out. <laughs> Jiang, there will be a recording later. FX Street will post a recording, so um, please go and take a look at that. Okay, and take a look at the Forex Focus videos that we put out on FX Street every week as well, because if you combine those videos with what I've shown you here, you'll have a very, very, very good trading strategy. All right? So um, thank you very much, everybody, for joining FX Street. Thank you for having me, as always. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, I look forward to seeing you all next month on next next month's webinars um, if you've got any questions please feel free to jump over to our website or drop us an email otherwise thank you very much for attending and i'll see you all next month okay so take care now and good trading